Hey guys, it's Evan and Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers. Hi guys. And today we're looking at some species that most of you are very familiar with, backyard birds. They're one of our most diverse groups of animals that we have during the winter, so let's take a look. So a lot of bird species migrate during the winter. Why are we filming now? Sure. So we actually have a large diversity of birds that will stay in our local region during the winter. And a lot of people don't realize how many different species we actually have. They are actually one of the most diverse groups of animals that will overwinter here in Pennsylvania. So we wanted to show all of that bird life to you guys. Well, the first group of birds that we wanted to talk to you guys about is the passerines. Now, passerines are considered perching birds, which means they are birds that are adapted to remain stationary on branches of trees or shrubs. These guys are our most diverse group of birds that are found during the winter months, and they are aided by many adaptations which help them survive. Passerines are usually smaller birds, and they're able to forage in a wide variety of habitats, including forests and fields. And another great adaptation these guys have is they have become very comfortable with human settlement and will actually move into urban areas when they're trying to get a feed. These guys are our true backyard birds, and they include a lot of famous species, including northern cardinals and American robins, which are some of our most recognizable winter birds. Now, during the winter, these guys are mostly going to be eating seeds and plant materials, because a lot of the times, their insect diet is not available. Our insects are mostly dormant throughout the winter. So these guys are going to transition into a much more plant-based diet. They'll be eating seeds and also berries when they can find them. Now one of the cool things passerines will actually do during the winter is they will form groups called mixed flocks, which are basically large gatherings of many different species of passerines in one area congregating around a food source. And this can often happen in populated areas where people have left out food for them. Now passerines are excellent survivors and they have special adaptations that help them survive the winter months if they are resident species. Now one of the things these guys are able to do is they are able to ruffle their inner layer of feathers, which is called their down feather layer. Now these down feathers are very soft and they're able to insulate the birds by trapping warm air in that inner layer, which helps these guys survive the sometimes very cold climates of eastern Pennsylvania. There are a lot more than just passerines in Pennsylvania though. Now let's take a look at our most specialized species of birds, our woodpeckers. So now let's talk about woodpeckers. Here in eastern Pennsylvania, we have seven species of native woodpeckers, and we were lucky enough to get five of them on film for you guys. Those include some of our most recognizable species, the downy woodpecker and the red-bellied woodpecker, and even a rare appearance from a pileated woodpecker, which we were super lucky to get on camera. The other two species, the red-headed woodpecker and the yellow-bellied sapsucker, don't appear here until the summertime, so we won't be covering them in this episode. Now, one of the standout features of woodpeckers is their foot structure. They have two toes in the front of their feet and two toes in the back. This is what's called zygodactyl foot structure, and it allows them to cling onto tree trunks vertically as they're drilling the, into the bark to find food. Passerines, on the other hand, have a nisodactyl foot structure, meaning that they have three toes up front and one in the back. This allows them to perch better on horizontal tree limbs. Now, woodpeckers are omnivores, and their diets vary slightly between species, but generally these guys are feeding mostly on insects. During the winter months, however, the supply of insects becomes quite scarce, so these guys will also eat acorns, berries, tree sap, and seeds. Now most of you guys are probably familiar with the woodpecker's unique feeding behavior. They drill into trees with their chisel-like beaks to expose insect larvae or tree sap. Something you guys may not have known though is that woodpeckers have incredibly long tongues that allow them to reach far down into their holes to capture any prey that might be hidden in the tree bark. They also use their specialized beaks to build nests in the sides of trees, which is their preferred place to shelter during the cold winter months. Woodpeckers are an absolutely iconic group of birds here in Pennsylvania, and it's always a treat to see them while bird watching. But now we're going to take a look at some of the other cool species we came across while exploring during the winter. 
While filming over the past few weeks, we were able to observe many of the water bird species that are found in Pennsylvania during the winter. One of these species was the belted kingfisher, which, as its name would suggest, is feeding on fish and small invertebrates in its riparian habitat. They share that habitat with a species you guys may recognize, the Canada Goose. If you haven't seen our video about these incredible animals already, make sure to check it out in the description below. A relative of the Canada Goose is the Mallard Duck, which we were also able to get in front of the camera many times. These guys are feeding on aquatic plant materials and grasses mostly, and will remain in small groups moving from one feeding spot to another. One interesting migratory bird that we were able to find is the ring-billed gull, which fly in by the hundreds during the winter. When the climate warms back up, these guys will make their way to the Jersey Shore, where we hope to catch up to them this summer. The water birds that we encountered were a lot of fun to film, but one of our most difficult tasks was trying to show you guys some of the avian predators of Pennsylvania, our birds of prey. Now this guy here is the American Crow. Crows are famously voracious omnivores, so these guys will eat pretty much anything they can find during the winter, including seeds, nuts, and carrion, or decaying flesh. We also got some shots of one of our most well-known raptor species, the red-tailed hawk. Red-tailed hawks feed mostly on rodents and other small mammals during the summer, but during the sparse winter months, they will resort to eating carrion and other birds as well. They proved rather difficult to get on film, as they spend most of their time gliding on gusts of wind as they scan the ground below for prey. Finally, we have our most famous scavengers, the black vulture and the turkey vulture. These guys are here all year round, feeding almost exclusively on carrion. Want to know more about these impressive scavengers? If so, you're in luck! We'll be covering these guys in the next episode of the Wildlife Brothers, so stay tuned. So for zoology enthusiasts such as ourselves, it's easy to become discouraged when looking for wildlife during the winter, because it tends to feel like all the wildlife goes away. Here in eastern Pennsylvania, a lot of our reptiles and amphibians go into brumation, our mammals go into hibernation, and a lot of our bird species migrate. But, as you can see, we have this nice flock of Canada geese right beside us, and what that goes to show is that in most places you'll visit, there actually are some really interesting species to see during the winter. So what we'd like to encourage you guys to do is go out into your local environment and see what you can find. You might be surprised how many species there are to see during the winter. All right, awesome. that was an awesome day, Bernie. Well, there you have it, guys. Those are some of the bird species that spend the winter here with us here in eastern Pennsylvania. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like and tell us in the comment section below if you guys will be going out to look for birds in your local area. And as always guys, don't forget to subscribe for more new wildlife content coming soon. See you guys! That's the ugliest northern flicker I've ever seen!